Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will be discussing about the first essential role of a typical flower which is the androecium or the male part of a typical flower. So we know this is the essential role of a particular flower which consists of the stamens. So stamens are the male reproductive part of a typical flower. So we know this. Stamens, now if we look into this picture, we will see these all are the stamens which are the male reproductive part of a flower. So a typical stamen, they have got slender like filament type of uh, filaments right so we can see over here these small thin red structures filament type structures we are seeing which are which are attached to this central axis is known as the filaments so these are the filaments and this filament attaches itself with the anther which contains the pollen grids so the yellow portions we are seeing over here these are the anther and these anther are connected to the central axis or the style of the or the female productive reproductive structure is known as style so it is attached by the help of the filaments of the, of the part of a stamen. So the stamen consists of two main parts, the filament and the anther and the anther contains the pollen grains. Now if you look into an anther, we will see the anther is typically bilobed structure, right? So this is an anther, you can see the stamens, this is the anther, this is the filament as we have discussed. So this is the bilobed structure, it has got two lobes, right? Now if we take a cross-sectional view right so we'll find that each of these chambers or the bilobe they are in turn containing two different chambers as you can see this is one lobe this is one lobe and in these lobes they have got two chambers and these chambers actually are called pollen sacs which contain the pollen grains or the male reproductive uh, these are the male gametes actually which will be helpful in the process of uh, sexual reproduction in these flowering plants so based on the type or how these type of androecium or the male reproductive part is available in a typical flower they can be of different types they have been given different names so what are those for example epipetalous so here if the stamens are attached to the petals right the stamens are fused with the petals or united with the petals they're not free then these type are known as the epipetalous a very good example is brinjal now the next type is known as epiphyllus if these stamens they are united or attached with the perianth. We know what is perianth? Perianth is those where the sepals and the petals cannot be properly distinguished. They remain fused and they look similar. So those are known as perianth. So if the stamens are attached to the perianth, they are known as the epiphyllous type of androecium. Example is lily. If the stamens are free, they are simply called as polyandrous type of petal uh, of the androecium. Now sometimes the stamens we are talking about we can see over here there are numerous uh, there are a number of stamens present in a particular flower so if all these type of stamens these are united into one single bunch this is called as monoadolphus for example which is seen in mostly in case of china rose if they are uh, united into two different bunches all the stamens they are, they are divided into two di different bunches then they are known as a diadolphus example in p and if some if at times these stamens we are talking about they can be united united but into different more than two bunches then they are known as the polyadolphus type of androecium so in this video we have talked about the first essential role of a typical flower which is known as androecium this is the male reproductive part we have discussed about the structure of androecium it consists of the stamens which is made up of two parts that is the filament and the anther which is a bilobed structure and the anther contains the pollen sacs which has got the pollen grains and we have also talked about the different types of androecium that has been given name based on if they are united with petals or perianth or they are remaining free or in bunches. So I hope you have liked and understood this video. Thank you.